Welcome, everybody. Uh, today's webinar is uh, devoted to IO and Peace Corporate members, Lab and Sun Nuclear. Um, the title of the webinar is Patient Radiation Safety Meets the IOMP Corporate Members. Professor Magdalena Stoeva and I will uh, moderate this session. Uh, please feel free to ask questions using the Zoom uh, Q&A tool. Uh, we will have about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes at the end for discussion. So the first speaker is Delina Hanson. Delina is the Director of Clinical Implementation for Lab Laser in the US. She has specialized in SGRT for the past decade, moving from a clinical user to applications trainer to senior product manager. Delina is currently leading the education and application of the new Luna 3D SGRT system from LAP from, uh, for North America. She's inspired by the patients and families she meets and the clinicians, of course, caring for, for them. She's passionate about helping cancer patients live better lives. So Delina, welcome. Uh, Delina's uh, um, presentation will be on Luna 3D, the new more in surface guided radiation therapy by LAP. So I'm happy that once again, we have big audience. Um, Delina, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you, John. I'm gonna try to share my screen here. Let me know if you don't see yes. it. Yes. We're good? Yes, it works. Wonderful, it thank works. you. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And thank you for that introduction. Let me see here. Get myself set up. <clears throat> Uh, I am, I'm really pleased to be here today. I live on the West Coast and normally I'm, uh, a, 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 this would be a 5 a.m. discussion for me, but I happen to be in Florida for work and really pleased that a better time zone here ma makes it much easier for our discussion today. Um, as John mentioned, I, I am a radiation therapist. I trained as a radiation therapist and I have been really embedded in surface guidance um, of all types for the last decade. Uh, I started using surface guidance in the clinic for deep inspiration breath hold. A lot has really happened since then. And SGRT has gone from this novel technology with really specific applications, for instance, deep, instant, deep inspiration breath hold, which is how I was using it in the clinic, to very much a more mainstream part of our, of our clinical day, particularly patient positioning, motion management, that safety aspect, making sure our patients are uh, where we believe they are, has really become kind of standard of care in the, in the industry more than, more than just for these specific treatments. Uh, as John mentioned, I am gonna be speaking about Luna 3D, our surface guided um, product. This is currently 510K pending, just to make sure that I get that out of the way right at the top. When we think about patient positioning, patient safety products, we often think about the LAP group um, just as a trusted name across the industry for really great quality products in our clinics. And what, what many people maybe are not aware of is that LAP has a much broader uh, portfolio than just positioning lasers. And we've really been delivering for the past 40 years as a global country uh, on that bigger, bigger portfolio. Specifically, as a, as a industrial solution, LAP has been working in laser projection. We have, we have been working with really high-end cameras with um, a lot of automation and uh, very fine, precise measurements for many years in really tough environmental conditions. Things like assembling windmill blades out in the field or on, on, a, on a completely different level, the, the micrometer detection of manufacturing defects in rolled steel tubing. And we've taken uh, our expertise from this industrial side and 
really applied many of those lessons learned and that domain knowledge to our healthcare solutions. As we dial in specifically on our healthcare portfolio, uh, yes, we do lasers. Uh, we also do a lot of interesting phantoms and, and we have been specifically growing this very intentional portfolio that goes that goes beyond that, um, including, you know, adding in things like RadCalc for providing really a more end-to-end -end patient safety solution. If we take into consideration our in-house strengths from the industrial side, really our step into surface guidance as an updated take on patient positioning, uh, that patient safety aspect, it was really just a logical step for us to keep us close to the patient treatment. Our portfolio is not complete yet, but we will be talking today about that very, you know, about surface guidance and how that has come in for us. Uh, of course, as a product, surface guidance has been ma maturing for really over 20 years now. We've seen publications grow uh, in its use from specific things like, like deep inspiration breath hold to become really a, a more generalized tool in the clinic. And for LAP, coming to surface guidance right now has allowed us really to leverage the most up-to-date technology. Uh, and we start really from the architecture of our system. We're using our, our browser-based technology. And of course, you've all seen what the NVIDIA stock is doing lately, but um, we've combined that with that GPU processing, which allows us to provide a, 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 a fixed frame rates per second, which is a little bit different than we've seen in the field. And it has really fast performance, low latency, 12 frame, frame rates per second. If you missed Dr. Michael Douglas speaking last month on uh, his gaming and smartphone development, his talk really complements the technologies that, that we are using. And he goes a lot deeper into the discussion of GPU, how it's developed over the last decade, the value of it in the clinic. And uh, I would recommend going back and listening to that January 24 discussion. It was really interesting. Our, um, our browser-based solution does offer some nice advantages in the ever-present IT and cybersecurity topics. It seems like that's uh, um, very common for me uh, uh, to be having these discussions right now as we try to keep our patients, uh, not just our patients safe on the couch, but our patients' information safe. Um, the browser concept really simplifies upgrades. It allows for hospitals to secure their, for, to have control over their security protocols. And it does simplify uh, like cross-platform compatibility, which I'll talk about um, a little more in the next slides. It gives us some additional flexibility in the way we see medical devices. <clears throat> of course, uh, you know, all of these are topics that um, surface guidance, but also medical devices in general struggle to keep up with. So starting from um, a, a very new base really does help us stay up to date on, on these topics for your clinic. All right, so let's take a closer look at Luna 3D. Uh, this is our traditional C-arm uh, configuration. We also have a CT solution and of course a, an in-bore, a, a, a or Linux solution that really benefits from some of the clinical features of Luna. And we'll take a look at that in the slides ahead. <clears throat> at a high level, you can see inside the treatment room are your cameras. Let me see if I can get my laser pointer going here. Inside the treatment room are the cameras um, here and also a, a, a big setup monitor in the room. And also then outside the room, uh, we, we have a, a display here. As we zoom in a little bit closer, um, each camera pod houses a projector with, uh, with two five megapixel pixel CMOS stereo cameras. CMOS sensors are really nicely suited to operating in harsh conditions for bunkers. They, they process pixel by pixel, so radiation damage doesn't happen to the entire line of the information, just if, if it happens, it happens to that one pixel. The projector we have uses a nice blue light, which is really 
uh, and projects a speckled pattern to create texture on the patient that's really specific for that one camera to recognize and interpret. Blue light's pretty skin tone agnostic, which is a nice feature of it as well. One thing that's interesting is while the blue light looks continuous, there's actually a firing synchrony that's happening between each camera and projector, which gives a 3D rendering of the patient um, that's then interpreted on the monitor. But to the visual eye, it just looks like a continuous blue light. So the, so the camera configuration does depend on your room. Um, the three camera pod for the C arm and a four camera pod for coverage both inside and outside the bore for, for uh, both inside and further outside the bore for setup. All right, let's take a little bit look, closer look at our in-room monitor. And there's a few things I'd like to highlight here. First of all, uh, the high compatibility of the browser UI allows us to configure each monitor and then to synchronize those monitors. So instead of using screen mirroring like we've normally seen. So being able to, for instance, remove the information from the UI in the room while keeping it at, con at the control room monitor then that allows our therapists to worry less about HIPAA compliance or, or uh, patient information as they busy clinics move patients in and out of the room. That large in-room monitor does give good visualization of the patient rendering. It's easy to see from wherever you are in the room. One of my favorite features is here this split view for understanding the vertical and the rotational information. Uh, in, con in conjunction with, with, sorry about that, I was trying to grab my highlighter, in conjunction with the, the longitudinal and latitude together. One thing you'll notice here that I'll talk a little bit more about is our, our virtual lasers superimposed onto the patient that also really uh, gives, gives good information of where, where the patient is in relation to where they should be. Okay, I'd like to highlight two other pieces of the Luna 3D system. Each system does come with uh, this iPad mini to keep the close point of care with the patient. It's operated with 5G wireless and it is really a remote operation of the system, not just a remote control. So this is, uh, includes the ability to adjust ROIs or change thresholds, that type of thing that may come up during treatment. Again, this is really just another version of the control room screen that's been continued for a, a tablet plat platform. We also have this small iPhone with a flexible mounting arm for use as a, as a breath hold coach. Uh, we do provide Apple products here. Uh, they tend to keep updates for a reasonably long time. They have good security on their devices. One thing the browser-based UI does is really reduce the dependency on hardware though. And we have this concept that we call bring your own device. So if you say have space constraints and need a different monitor or you want to add another tablet in, we give you really great guidance on what the minimum requirements are for, for a, a hardware device, but there's no need to purchase that from us. Uh, and you can change those out as you need to. It makes it much easier for uh, for departments to keep their keep their hardware and their consistency consistency along that along those lines. All right, we've zoomed in. We've viewed some of the key components of Luna 3D. So let's take a step back and look at the larger architecture. Here on the left of the screen, you see the Luna 3D central server. This can be provisioned as a virtualized server that can just stay in your farm, or it can be a physical server depending on the needs of the site. <clears throat> the central server itself acts just as a cache for all of the Luna 3D information, and it connects out to the hospital network. Specifically, it, it's listening as a passive listener to your TPS system via DICOM. And then we also have the ability to connect your OIS for scheduling information. Uh, now, if you look each of these boxes, let me see if I can get my laser pointer to work again. Each of these boxes do represent one room. So we have a control room here and a treatment room here. All of the equipment is for that one specific room uh, as opposed to that server. We start with our SGRT works, workstation that is uh, 
a powerful computer that's doing the processing of eight megabytes of data coming in continuously from the cameras. And it is connected via ethernet to a, a, a desktop PC. All of this is done really specifically to keep our latency low. Also inside the room, then you can see a distribution box. Uh, this powers and triggers the cameras and then it connects out to the different camera configurations. And here also you can see, as we discussed, that setup screen plus the, the, the screens in the room. One thing to note really is that um, your Luna virtual server houses the information for all of these rooms wherever they are. And it makes it really easy to switch between rooms and, and to have the patient information follow with your, with your, with your patient wherever they go. Okay, we've discussed the hardware <clears throat> uh, and technical information for the system. Uh, so I'd like to focus on four main features that make this a really robust product for clinicians. Uh, first, our calibration process, uh, then what an expanded field of view means for us. We'll talk a little bit more about our virtual laser tool. And I know I've, I've had plenty to say about the browser-based UI, but there's some clinical features I'd just like to add in there. So starting with our system calibration, we borrowed a concept that we've used on our industrial side and Luna, the Luna 3C system is calibrated as a whole. And what I mean by that is that instead of having um, each camera calibrated individually and then combining them in the software, we calibrate all of the cameras at the same time together. So they all see the same ISO center point at the same time. This provides a really stable field of view, even in adverse conditions like camera occlusion. Uh, as LAP is known for patient positioning, it makes sense for us uh, that we've really focused on having a large field of view with good information, thousands of data points for positioning. But we've also made that field of view quite flexible. So let's say you want to set your patients up at a lower, more ergonomic position, save some back problems, or maybe you want to position the patient outside the bore. Luna actually allows the user to configure multiple additional ISO center points to meet your clinical workflows for that. And, and that can be configured per site. And of course, then setting up a patient with lasers <clears throat> is uh, something that's been ingrained in therapists for decades. So we use the concept of virtual lasers and we superimpose that onto the patient's surface really to help bring down the barrier of implementing new technology. The, the lasers, every therapist knows how to pull a patient based on the lasers. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a great tool to help make sure that your patient head to toe is aligned correctly uh, along with the fine tuning of the surface guidance. Okay, just a quick word on the browser-based technology. Offline planning and reporting are all features that we offer. And uh, the nice thing about the browser is that it really sits where you are. It can, it can be pulled up from anywhere within the hospital network, uh, allows you to use it through Citrix even as well. And you can pull open the, the browser where and when you need it to be able to do your work. All right, now let's get into the real details of the workflow. Uh, we'll start with Luna 3D in your imaging suite for breath holds, and then we'll go through the offline planning. We can show um, Luna for patient positioning, and then we'll go at, at, at treatment, and then at the end, I'll talk a bit about our reporting feature. So with Luna at uh, 3D at CT, we use a heat map that senses patient motion. Uh, this is a great tool to aid the user in defining the motion tracking ROI. Um, of course, we have this little breath hold coach. Uh, it, this really guides the, the patient into efficient breathing for breath hold treatments. We also have a, a breath hold recording tool that can show anomalies and help verify that, uh, that amplitude change at the treatment machine. <clears throat> Once the work at CT is completed, the offline planning tool 
supports consistency ap across your department. We use uh, a concept of templated workflows that you can develop uh, as as your as a department, and then and then use as you need to to keep that consistency across your department. We do also support multiple re ROIs. <clears throat> Um, you know, possibly you want to set up a patient with a larger area with more stable tissue and then use a smaller ROI for a targeted treatment. Um, you, or possibly you want just an amplitude-based ROI for breath hold treatments as well. All of this can be configured in the offline tool. And I, by the way, as a browser, uh, the tool can be pulled up anywhere which means that you don't need to have yet another keyboard and monitor at the console or, or back in the dosimetry room or wherever it is. It can, it can be um, used wherever you can pull it up. Okay, with the preparation work done and your offline planning tool, the power of Luna 3D with virtual lasers and additional ISO centers for ergonomic positioning uh, really, uh, allows this flexibility of building your workflows into your system and, and makes implementing surface guidance approachable for the entire staff. <clears throat> uh, the motion management itself is enabled with a really simple surface capture, assuring that even if you have unexpected patient motion, as small as a, a sneeze or a cough, that you can really quantify uh, that motion without the need for any additional radiation. For SRS and non-coplanar treatments, we do have the highest precision and accuracy that's provided with the base cost of the system. There's no need for any upgrades. It's a great tool to uh, help make sure that your, your patient is where you believe they are. <clears throat> and of course, Oftentimes, surface guidance is explored by a clinic for its breath hold capabilities. Dozens of people, patient, I'm sorry, dozens of papers have shown the real value of surface guidance for this application. Luna 3D is no exception here. We really do give good guidance uh, for, for helping your patient to match that dosimetric plan. And Luna 3D also employs these treatment steps where it gives very good protocols, very simple to, to follow your, your process through kind of a tricky treatment. <clears throat> then once the treatment is complete, our reporting feature, uh, it allows a PDF to be generated on demand. We do treatment reports. We also do QA reports. Uh, we can do trending here. You also have the ability to uh, customize your own report template. And um, in addition, we have an API generation key, an API key generation tool. And that allows you to send your data to third-party applications for processing. Okay, just to wrap up here, uh, this is a preclinical study that was done by our partner, Rod Weersma at UPenn, looking specifically at the robustness of Luna 3D, um, really at the ambient lighting and camera occlusion. And his uh, results really concluded that the system had great tracking of different surface colors and decreased sensitivity to ambient room lighting and really great sub-millimeter, sub-degree positional accuracies, similar to the IR camera, those high-grade IR cameras. I bring that poster up so I can transition us back to talking a little bit about LAP. Uh, LAP has rested its reputation on products that work very well and a customer experience to make sure you feel supported. This is something we take great pride in. Um, our introduction of Luna is 3D is no exception to that. Really our surface guidance is designed to provide this end-to-end -end patient safety, patient positioning, patient monitoring from CT simulation through, through to the end of your treatment delivery. Uh, you know, everywhere where you have had our lasers, you'll continue to be, we will continue to be there bringing cutting edge technology. All right, uh, if you would like more information, you can go ahead and scan this QR code. 
I appreciate the time to share with you today. And just to wrap up, uh, we are uh, having a, a, our next webinar, which is by Dr. Hui at Olden, in Oldenburg, Germany. He will be talking on his preclinical experience and you can scan here to register. Many thanks, uh, Delina, for, for this excellent uh, presentation. Uh, Magdalena, would you like to present the next speaker, please? Or shall I do it? Please go ahead, John. You can do it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm happy to uh, introduce our next speaker from Sun Nuclear, um, Greg Martin. Hi, Greg. Uh, the, the title of his presentation is Sun Nuclear, Your Trusted Partner for Patient Safety. Um, so, Greg, please. Hi there. Is, okay. is everything okay in terms of audio? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you very well, yeah. Okay, excellent. That's always the trickiest part of these presentations to make sure that all of your, all of your audios and visuals can be can be seen. In terms of my slides, are you seeing my slides on your side? Yes. Perfect, okay. Well, then I'll get going. So for those I have not met before, my name's Greg Martin. I'm very proud to be one of the global application physicists in Sun Nuclear. So I am a clinical scientist by background. I worked in the NHS for, for nearly 10 years as a radiotherapy physicist. And I've worked for Sun Nuclear now into my third year with the with the company. And you know the, the concept of, of of the talk today that I'm giving on on Sun Nuclear is is an overview of, of what ourself as a company can provide to our customers. And the title we've gone for is is your trusted partner for patient safety. And there's many different ways that we can we can support you in that in that goal. So just to give an overview, I always like giving an overview of the talk so that you know what to expect as we are as we are coming through. I'm going to give a very brief overview of Sun Nuclear and, and what we are as a company for those of you that maybe aren't too familiar with, with who Sun Nuclear are. And then I'm going to go through three of our kind of headline products. We're going to start off with SunCheck, which is our absolute foundation cornerstone project. Uh, I would certainly say it's a, it's a class leading solution and something that I was I was really lucky to get to use clinically. I'm then gonna go through SunScan, which is our, our, our brand new 3D cylindrical water tank system. And then I'm gonna go through the SRS map check, which is our SRS stereotactic film equivalent QA solution. So hopefully that's of interest to you. Let's get started. So in terms of what Sun Nuclear does is we try to be for radiotherapy quality assurance and now wider into, into diagnostic imaging, pretty much anywhere in your hospital where you use radiation, then hopefully there will be a sun nuclear solution that can meet your needs. So the idea is that, you know, we are an independent company. We're always going to be separated from the, from the radiation equipment manufacturer and the software, the treatment plan and systems as the manufacturers for those systems. And we will support you with your quality assurance as, a, as an organization. So for those that aren't familiar, Sun Nuclear was actually founded in 1984. So we are celebrating our 40th birthday this year, which is quite an impressive feat for the company. And to, to on that theme, we have over 400 employees. We're honing in on 500 employees. It was primarily founded in the US, but I'm based in the UK. So, you know, we've now expanded well beyond that. We have offices across Europe, and colleagues based in just about every every continent in the world that has linear accelerators. So hopefully, you know, wherever you are in the world, then you will have some nuclear um, partners and distributors nearby that can support you in your decision making. So to give a very brief overview of the, the solutions that Sun Nuclear offer, then we have a number on the patient side, which is always a, a primary focus, right? You know, if you are set up a, a radiotherapy service or, you know, you're an experienced radiotherapy center, your patient QA, your patient safety is always going to be your number one priority. So we have devices that can measure your radiotherapy QA plans. We have the map check, which is the, the product that Sun Nuclear kind of built the company on. It was the, um, the initial product that kind of went viral, if you will. 
And it's designed around conformal and, and specifically IMRT QA was the reason that it really, really took off. It was kind of the device for IMRT when it first came to the market. That that has now evolved. So we now have a stereotactic version of the map check that we call the SRS map check. And for your art treatments, we have the art check, which is becoming the industry standard for your art treatments. It's the only solution that I would say is designed around always encapsulating everything all of the radiation that's emitted from your treatment device. It's the only solution to always have entry and exit dose. And it's specifically designed around those art deliveries. All of the solutions I would say are, are very versatile. So whether you're using C-Arm Linux, whether you're using Donuts, um, your, your bore-based Linux, or whether you are doing um, coplanar or non-coplanar with couch rotations, all of our solutions are not just compatible with that, but have a strong evidence base behind them. We have some really nice software solutions to complement our patient portfolio. So products that can, can evidence not just your, your plan safety, but your plan quality. Is this plan as good as it can be, close to optimal as it should be? And then we have SunCheck Patient, which encapsulates a lot of these devices and standalone softwares into a single platform. Moving over to our machine QA side, we have the SunCheck machine, which is the, the, the other half of the coin of the SunCheck patient side. We have the daily QA3, which is, is you know, I, I would say just about um, every country in the world. I think most around about half the, the radiotherapy hospitals in the in the world have a have a daily QA3 in there. So it's certainly becoming the, the industry standard for daily QA3. We have laser solutions, both for MR and non-MR environments. And again, we have different ways that they can be set up and configured, whether they're wall mounted, whether they're bridges or ceiling mounted. There's lots of different ways that we can support you in that. We have a full range of, of, of phantoms, both across radiotherapy and diagnostic. We have the IC profiler, which is, is really nice to be able to say that not only do we think it's the best device, uh, the ionization chamber array, for your machine QA, but varying Elector view ray and the Elector Unity team all use the IC profiler in things like manufacturing, installation, and servicing. So the cool thing about the IC profiler, if you're not familiar with it, is your radiotherapy treatment devices have probably already had an IC profiler underneath them. We have a full range of motion platforms. We now have CIRS within our portfolio. So um, you know, one of the things that we were enabled to put forward from them is the motion platforms. We, they have a really, really strong range of anthropomorphic phantoms. So anyone who's setting up services or wishes to do robust end-to-end -end test with tissue equivalent phantoms, the anthropomorphic phantom range is something that we're really, really proud to offer. Any MR Linac, MR guided radiotherapy solution uh, users out there, then we have a full range of solutions for your MR Linac, so versions of our products that are safe in that complex MR environment. And we also have some tomotherapy products for our tomotherapy users as well. <laughs> Moving over to our dosimetry solutions, so specifically around measuring dose, we have the SunScan 3D, which I'm going to go through in a little bit of detail with you. We have the 1D scanner, which is the, the 1D complementary version of the SunScan. We have our, our PC electrometer. It is a reference class electrometer that plugs directly into your computer. You run and drive it through your computer through a USB socket. Um, so it's incredibly small. The idea is that it lives on your Linux, plugged into your, um, your console, um, and you can do all of your symmetry through that device, managing it through your computer, where you can take those results and use them in the computer rather than having to manually transcribe them into any systems that you use. We have a full range of detectors. Um, you know, our detector portfolio is, is something that is growing. Again, all reference class detectors where appropriate. And finally, we have our, our diagnostic QA solutions. So uh, formerly Gamex, uh, now again, part of Sun Nuclear, has a, a full range of, of diagnostic solutions covering CT, ultrasound, mammography, planar x-ray QA and um, advanced electron density as well as multi energy CT phantoms for your dual energy CT systems. Again, a very comprehensive portfolio I'd like to think. So again, if you're looking for, for companies to partner with in terms of QA across your, 
your radiotherapy and your diagnostic departments, then hopefully you've seen so far something that would maybe interest you. So I'm now going to switch gear into one of our specific products. So this is the SunCheck platform. It's been around for a number of years now. And again, it's becoming the industry standard in terms of being the single radiotherapy quality QA platform. We've just crossed 1,800 users around the world. And again, this platform is based not just on machine QA, not just on patient QA, but both combined into a single platform. So the idea is that with this single platform, it's a single web user interface that you have, and that is access to a single IT architecture, whether that's on-premise service or whether that's cloud. And um, we also have a, a software as a service subscription available through the cloud. So you access it again through your web browsers. So you do not need any locally installed software. The whole concept of the platform is around automation. I don't think SunCheck would work if there was manual processes that needed to be done. It's too vast, it's too complex. And that's where automation really assists you. All around the world, when I speak to physicists, when I speak to dosimetrists, therapists in departments, they're all facing the same challenges with more patients, less staff, less funding, and just having to do more with less. So being able to automate so much of your radiotherapy QA into a single central platform, standardizing your quality and your patient care is a huge benefit to anyone out there. You can access it from anywhere using that web user interface within your hospital network. You can use single sign-on so you don't even need another username and password. And it's integrated into many of your systems within your hospital, like your oncology information or record and verify systems, as well as a lot of the hardware devices, both Sun Nuclear and outside of Sun Nuclear. On the patient side, we have uh, physics and dosimetric plan checks built into the platform. We have a full 3D secondary dose calculation. We have a phantom list and array-based pretreatment QA. We have in vivo monitoring, which is kind of the headline feature on the, on the patient side of the platform that I'm going to go into in a little bit more detail. And then on the machine side of the platform, all of your machine QA, whether that's linac based CT-based, imaging-based, brachytherapy-based, then all of those devices QA should be manageable within the QA platform uh, within SunCheck machine. We have device direct device connectivity to our own devices and indirect connectivity to a lot of our competitors' devices. Again, all based around automation and a lot of our imaging tasks. So pretty much anything that's based delivered to the MV or the KV systems can be automatically retrieved and analyzed for you. So to break this down, then on the on the patient side, we have kind of three modules. So um, plan check, dose check, and perfraction. They're all part of the same platform. If you needed them individually, you can do that. But primarily, you will use through a single user interface and access all of this functionality. Exactly the same on the machine side, whether you want the automated imaging QA or whether you want the to be able to manage all of your QA outside, then you can do that through that single user interface. This is kind of the concept that we built the patient side of the platform out of. So we've designed, we've tried to design a system that can detect all errors or most errors from, from all of the main sources. So we have a robust 3D secondary dose calculation, which is specifically designed to capture B model and errors in your treatment planning system. We have high resolution 3D arrays, whether that's using the EPID, whether it's using the art check or using log file QA calculated on the treatment plan or this cone beam CT scan. This will capture things like beam modeling errors, transfer corruption, and deliverability errors. And then last, but by no means least, the full in vivo side of the platform, where you can measure the dose that's come out of the patient, compare it against what's expected. We can look at the log files and reconstruct on the cone beam CT. Then again, the errors that this captures is the transfer corruption, the deliverability, but this time patient changes. So if there's any change in, in setup or any anatomical changes, then you would capture that. So I would say with SunCheck patient, all of the main sources of errors, I would say you'd be able to capture within the platform. So plan check is based around uh, doing physics checks. So looking at plan parameters, structures, deliverability checks, 
It also has over 70 different dose metric templates built into it to make sure that the doses that are within the plan match, you know, your contact papers, your RTOG guidance, etc. And again, all of this is, is automatically checked from the, from the plan. Our dose check, which is our full 3D secondary dose calculation. We have multiple algorithms available, both Collapse Cone and Monte Carlo. We are compatible with Siam, with Tomotherapy, with Halcyon and Brachytherapy. And again, we try and, with all of our devices, with all of our software, we try and extract out as much meaningful results as we can in order to be able to give you all the metrics that are of interest to you. So from point doses, from structure checks, from overall, overall 3D checks, they're all included within the dose check functionality. So as I said, we also have HDR brachytherapy supports. So again, you know, really nice to be able to have that to go with your HDR afterloaders. So after you've done your plan check and you've done your secondary dose calculation, you might want to do some pre-treatment QA. Again, we have multiple ways that you can do this. So you can deploy the EPID. And again, SunCheck will automatically retrieve those images from your EPID, capture at the log file delivery, and then use that, uh, compare the 2D results against a predicted image in terms of absolute dose. You can take the log files and reconstruct the delivery on the treatment plan and CT. But also you can plug your arc check directly into the computer that's running SunCheck and take that measured dose and place it straight into, sun, into SunCheck. It will then be compared against an expected dose and you do not have to create a QA plan, export the, uh, all of the files out of your treatment plan system to third party software. Because SunCheck has that dose calculation engine in it and it has the CT scan of the arc check, by this point, it will already have all the information it needs in order to do that calculation for you. So incredibly powerful for your different options for your pre-treatment QA. And then, as I said, kind of the headline functionality on the patient side is our Invivo. So again, we can take 2D EPID images in terms of absolute dose and compare against a predicted image. And we can take the log files, we can reconstruct on the cone beam CT. So you get that, you know, what dose was delivered where it was delivered to, and if it fails, you can see where it's failing and hopefully why it's failing as well. So some new things, some really exciting things that um, were, were launched at the end of last year. We're now fully compatible with, with Halcyons and the in vivo side, so full absolute dose on your EPID, as well as log file functionality and secondary dose calculation functionality on Halcyons. We also have full triple F support for electors, and on your cone beam CT reconstruction, we can now have multiple cone beam CT imaging protocols so that you can automatically reconstruct using the exact um, electron density to Hansfield unit calibration curves in there as well. So switching gears onto SunCheck machine, the idea of this, this side of the platform is we have multiple international QA templates already built into SunCheck. Templates are shareable and we have a support site where you can post and download users own templates. It's very easy to go through and customize templates, selecting different parts from different, different templates, different QA standards and be ready to go very, very quickly. In terms of configuration, it's worth noting that we have a dedicated team within Sun Nuclear called the Sun Deploys team. And it is their job to support you from downloading SunCheck through installation, training, configuration, and take you through that whole process. So there's no scary, here is the manual, good luck. You get supported through this entire journey. So if you see SunCheck and think, I don't know whether we'd be able to do this, it looks like a lot of work, the Sun Deploys team will support you through this entire journey, including setting up your QA templates in SunCheck machine. We have direct device connectivity on the machine side, to the daily QA3 and the IC profiler. We have more devices that at Estro this year will be launching the integration of those as well. So in terms of the QA that we can, you know, really easily manage, you know, you can have simple pass fail, yes, no, true, false results. If you have any numerical values and you want them to be compared against a warning or a failure level, you can manage those types of QA. As we've already said, we have the device integration. We also have custom calculations, which turns our QA templates into Excel style spreadsheets. So you can do calculations from within the, the QA results that you have recorded. 
and the automated image retrieval. So again, any results, pretty much any QA that you deliver to your MV system or your KV system can be automatically retrieved by SunCheck from your Record and Verify system, analyzed, and the results presented you in SunCheck without any manual import or export. Exactly the same as what it is on the patient side. We have full trending capabilities and batch approvals so that all of your results can be compared as well as to, to historical results, as well as to other Linux. Some brand new features again on the machine side from the end of last year. We can now bring in third party files. So if it's a CSV or an XML file, we can bring those files into SunCheck, recognize that file extract key data from that file and automatically post it into QA templates in SunCheck. We've automated this with MPC so that the results from MPC will be automatically extracted from that server and posted into the SunCheck platform without any manual, again, importing and exporting. Incredibly powerful to open up SunCheck, not just to SunNuclear solutions, but to any internal or third party devices that can produce the results in an XML or a CSV file so that they can be interpreted and managed within SunCheck. We also have launched asset management, which allows you to manage all of your assets within your department, save data against them. And the, one of the key functionalities within that allows you to store calibration factors against assets so that you can recall those assets during your QA and automatically extract out all those calibration factors from within your asset management library. So again, we're going to switch gears now and I'm going to move on to the SunScan 3D. In honesty, I, I spend all day talking about SunCheck and I'm incredibly proud to do so. But SunScan is my favorite product that Sun Nuclear do. I think it's the most cutting edge product that we have. And I would argue it's the most cutting edge 3D water tank that's on the market. To give an idea of, of the level of, of sophistication of this tank, I'm going to show you this very, very short video. And this is what shows you, hopefully, that this tank is completely user independent. Whether it's the first time you've used this tank or you're a very experienced physicist, you've been using some nuclear solutions for decades, you will get exactly the same user independent setup in an automated fashion in under seven minutes. So the tank itself, oh, it's alongside its incredible precision, sits on top of an auto leveling platform. So what that means is, when the tank is filled with water, we can measure the water surface in multiple positions around the tank. We can then work out how level the tank is compared to that water, and then we will physically level the tank for you. So there's no virtual corrections, it's all physical corrections. You can then turn your radiation beam on, perform some scans, and then again, the tank will physically center itself on the radiation isocenter, put the effective point of measurement on the water surface on the radiation ISIS center. So your tank in under seven minutes is set up and ready to scan without any manual setup from yourself, without any user dependent or human error introduced. So incredibly powerful features. So for those that are not familiar with a cylindrical tank, then the, the kind of the, the reasons we've gone down that route is first of all, consistent detector orientation. We are always scanning across the width of the detector rather than some of our competitors where they scan across the width, but also the length. This can in introduce difference in resolution between the, the detectors. 65 centimeter scanning range. So our biggest competitor has a 50 centimeter scanning range, whereas we have 65. So that means that even a 40 by 40 field at 30 centimeters deep, you can capture the full field. The whole tank was designed to be user centric, so easy to use. I would always argue it's physicist proof, maybe it's not quite idiot proof, but physicist proof certainly. The accuracy in this tank is unparalleled compared to anything else on the market. It uses pul virtual pulse normalization. So it means that the electrometer has the temporal resolution to resolve each individual pulse of the LINAC. So you can normalize to the number of pulses that you have in a signal. Therefore you do not need a reference sector. The auto setup process with the auto leveling platform is done in under seven minutes. The electrometer has a dual bias. We have a brand new pendant with a screen on it so you can see exactly where all the components of your tank are. And even the lift now has an encoder so that you know where that is and it can be reproducibly positioned. 
Its radiation lifespan is 10 years, and that was designed for 33 zero Linac commissionings for all electrons and all photon energies. And the Sundose software that goes with the SunScan, again, I would say is the best bit of software we've got. It's so user intuitive um, and so helpful in the features that it has. For any Halcyon and Ethos users, we were the only tank that was that has been launched after these products hit the market. So this tank has been designed from day one to be compatible with these with these uh, cylindrical uh, donuts, bore based Linux, and we have both hardware and software that allows it to be fully compatible with those devices. Again, the software that we have with with um, with SunScan is is incredibly intuitive really nice to use and the the lessons we've learned from this we're now applying across our software portfolio including suncheck so ui designers that we've used for sundos are also now being used across our portfolio again if you see us at estro then you'll be able to show you some of that going forward there's also some advanced tools which allow you to measure the angle of incidence so once your tank is level to water then you can measure the angle of incidence of the beam and account for that and again, you know, if you then measure profiles and your profiles are asymmetric, you then know that that's coming from the Stephen cause of your Linux. Whereas if you apply virtual corrections and your scans look great, you have no idea if you've corrected for an error in the tank setup, in the Linux, or in the Stephen coils. So again, knowing your sources of error as a physicist is so important. And I think that's exactly what the SunScan allows you to do. So again, switching gears to our SRS map check, one of our um, one of our newer projects, but also one of our most popular projects. So just before Christmas, Christmas within the five years this product has been on the market, and we just sold our thousandth SRS map check. So again, I don't think a thousand customers can be wrong. You know, when a pop when a product starts getting this popular, it's popular for a reason. It's also part of our SRS portfolio. So uh, the Multimet Winston Lutz Cube, anyone who's treating our faxes, then, then that's a, a simple solution that allows you to quantify your treatment accuracy off axis, not just on your radiation ISA center. So anyone who was treating off axis, it's the only solution on the market that allows you to do that. So I'd encourage you to look at that, as well as our full range of anthropomorphic and MR distortion uh, phantoms that go with our stereotactic portfolio. To briefly introduce the SRS map check, it's around about eight centimeters in size. It has just over a thousand detectors. The detectors are less than half a millimeter by half a millimeter. And it is the, the sun dose, the sun point diode. It's the diode that Sun Nuclear has literally built the company on. It was in the map check, it's in the arc check, it's now at the SRS map check. It's in the edge detector, which is our stereotactic diode that we use for our 3D tank. And it is designed to measure what we need to measure in, S in, in SRS. So it's designed around this Nyquist sampling theory. So the detector size, the detector space, and is designed to be the optimal resolution in order to measure what we are trying to measure. There are so many publications on the SRS map check. It's one of our most published devices. Um, you know, there's a really strong evidence base around the film equivalence of this device. As with all the Sun Nuclear patient-specific QA arrays, it has a really strong evidence base to be used with non-coplanar beams, which is something that, in honesty, our competitors can sometimes struggle with. Whereas we have the evidence base behind it to say that, yes, not only do we claim that you can, but we have this evidence to also say that it has successfully been used with that. If there are any CyberKnife users, then I would say the SRS map check is a must for you. It's the only solution on the product that can automate a lot of your CyberKnife QA. And within the, uh, the SRS map check software tools, then it, there's some uh, a QA setup tool that allows you to optimize the position that you would put the SRS map check in within your dose cube so that you can maximize the area that you have. It's fully compatible again with Halcyons and non-standard treatment devices. It's compatible with your flatten and filter free beams. And again, all of your non-complainer angles can be measured with the SRS map check. Again, the CyberKnife QA features are incredibly powerful. It automates and standardizes a lot of very subjective, very time-consuming film QA for CyberKnife users. So if you're a CyberKnife user, I would definitely say that you want to have a look at the SRS map check. The SRS map check goes within the stereo fan, which is an end-to-end -end test phantom in itself. 
has a lot of different inserts that come as standard and also optional ones as well. The Multimet Winston Lutz Cube also goes inside the stereo fan. So again, our stereo tactic QA solutions are the idea is that they integrate together and work as a, as a portfolio of solutions rather than individual devices. So with that, I'm going to conclude my presentation and say thank you so much for your attention today. If there's any questions, it's probably going to be slightly easier to do them via email. But if you do have any interest on any of the, the Sun Nuclear QA solutions, then I would say reach out to your uh, on the Sun Nuclear website, be in touch with your local distributor, and we can go from there about helping you learn more about them. Thanks for your time, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Greg, for, for your presentation. We have some questions. So, uh, but I will start with Delina. I know she has some uh, commitments uh, and she has to leave soon. I mean, we don't have uh, time, uh, but we might extend a little bit, a few minutes, uh, this webinar uh, to, to discuss a little bit. So, Delina, I think the first question has already been answered. Uh, your system works with Apple, uh, also with Android, right? Because the question is about, yeah. The yeah, Android. right. Um, the concept to bring your own device, really, the compatibility is, is with the browser itself and not with the device. So Android products are, are work perfectly well. Uh, how do you deal with camera obstructions when taking CBCTs in breath holds, for example? That's another question. Yeah, so I, I touched on that just a little bit during the presentation. With our with our calibration as a, as a whole idea, that really means that if one camera is blocked, uh, so let me back up one step. Part of the problem that we've seen with, with camera occlusion really has to do with this idea that <clears throat> as one camera is blocked or two cameras are blocked, the surface guidance tends to, to pull from one direction to the other. Like the, the cameras are, are, are fighting each other. And in the case of Luna, those cameras instead are all calibrated to the same point. So they don't need to, to fight each other to get to the right spot. So in a really simplistic terms, that's uh, the, the calibration piece is how we make sure that we don't have problems during camera occlusion. Mm -hmm. Uh, can Luna do gating of the beam in free breathing using real-time tracking of respiratory movements? If not, are you planning to implement it? Right. So, so the the current release, our our, our uh, release that is currently five ten k pending, is not a, a gating device yet. Uh, that is, of course, the direction all of all of Surface Guidance is heading, and and we're no exception to that. Uh, thanks a lot, Greg. Uh, there are also a few, some questions for you. So one is, does the integration of the IC profiler in the SunCheck machine QA solution support online profile analysis for beam steering purposes? So that's a really interesting question. So at Estro this year, we will be launching our live QA on the IC profiler. You can already record the full movie file of your delivery and uh, measure the, the average or the max profiles but your live Steam and QA is going to be launched at Estro this year. So yes, I'm proud to say we'll be able to do that. A uh, couple of questions from uh, Yakov Pipman. Yakov was the um, chair of the Professional Relations Committee of the IOMP. Uh, so uh, could you comment about what would your advice, what is your advice to a uh, LMIC practitioner, low income countries? Uh, practitioners with limited resources. So this is related to the cost of uh, those sophisticated systems, sophisticated systems, but expensive, I, I guess. Yes. Um, so that's a that's an interesting point, and I would say you know we do partner with with lots of different organisations in terms of support in low income countries. Um, so you know the the International Atomic Energy Association, we partner with um, regularly. We partner with countries that are using EU funding. Um, and, and have access to that. So I would certainly say that, you know, if there are available routes to do that, we can we can support you with that. But I would say for certainly things like SunCheck, it is it can be modular if you need it to be. So if you had to prioritize certain areas, say like a robust 3D secondary dose calculation is something that I would say is absolutely key in any department, then again, we can support you with that. And with things like software as a service, then instead of having to have this big capital outlay 
upfront to purchase the solution, then you can just use a low cost subscription um, over time. So hopefully between these different ways of, of managing things, we can do the same on the on the hardware side, by the way, um, in terms of kind of like an annual payment. Hopefully it makes it a lot more affordable than having to make a big capital outlay up front. Mm -hmm. And can you comment about profile measurements with a gantry at a lateral angle with a cylindrical water phantom? Yeah, interesting question. So I would say the purpose of a water phantom is all about characterizing your beam in as high quality and as much detail as possible. So I would say, you know, you're always going to primarily do that at gantry zero. That is what you're going to have to put into your treatment planning system. It's what your treatment planning system requires. And all of your uh, your golden beam data, your reference data from your manufacturers is always going to be uh, primarily at, at gantry zero. So that allows you to to have the confidence that what is coming out of your Linac matches exactly what it should be, what you're using in your planning system or what the manufacturer recommends. For all the international QA guidance around um, doing QA at different gantry angles is all around consistency, just to make sure that your profiles, your, be your beam isn't changing with gantry angles. So I would say if you're doing that type of QA, then getting a water tank out, no matter what water tank you have, is probably the wrong way to go. I would say using a device like the, the Daily QA3 or the IC Profiler in the gantry mount where you can quickly just rotate the, um, the, the gantry, the device is fixed into the mount, then you can do that at any angle. And it's much quicker and much simpler uh, and much more appropriate for doing that type of QA. And last question, we are already uh, four minutes past one Greenwich mean time. How long would the setup for a typical breast treatment take an approximate yeah estimate an estimate i don't know if that would be more for for the for the first speaker rather than rather than myself um i guess it is for you i don't know i don't know so so if, from yeah. i mean i i can answer and say you know when when i work clinically a, a breast fraction would usually be quite you know one of the one of the more shorter treatments so i would say between 10 and 15 minutes for a breast fraction should be absolutely more than more than enough great so uh, again unfortunately because of uh, speakers and moderators sometimes various commitments uh, we cannot always extend the duration of uh, webinars. We have already extended four minutes <laughs> this webinar. Greg, many thanks for your uh, excellent presentation. I would like to thank both um, uh, speakers, also Magdalena, who is always behind the scenes. Without Magdalena's support, this uh, would be impossible to, to organize um, uh, webinars so frequently. Uh, and of course, I would like to, to thank our, our great audience uh, for the active uh, participation. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you.